Welcome, everyone, to another edition of About the Town. I'm Craig Coughlin, your host. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you. Later on, we'll be joined by Paul Vigoro. He's the author of a new novel. But first, joining me is Bill Patterson. Bill is an author himself uh, and the regional coordinator, uh, municipal regional coordinator for an organization called NaNoWriMo, uh, who's done a terrific project with our own Woodbridge Library. Bill, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So you're a novelist, yes. right? How'd you get started doing that? It's it's a it's a rather long story, longer than we've got here. <laughs> okay. But uh, essentially, when I was in college, I, I wrote stories instead of doing research projects, which was allowed. And uh, it's it's a lot easier writing a story in for my brain cells than it was to, you know, figure out light and dark in the Elizabethan theater or whatever the the, the topic was. Uh, but when I went and joined the workaday world, that kind of faded away. Two thousand three, I tried to start a novel because I had to. You know, fantastic idea, or at least so I thought. <laughs> um, and that didn't work. Uh, I got to about chapter five, and it died. And that is a problem with a lot of people uh, that novel without a support system. Okay, or they, they try to write something down, they get to uh, about 50 pages in, 100 pages in, and they stop. Uh, and that's what happened to me. Around 2006. Why is it? Why do you hit that wall at 50 pages? Well, it's, pages, um, give or take? there was, um, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the, uh, the, the lady's name who said this, but she said, essentially, uh, when you hit 100 pages, you've run out of the original idea's inspiration, and you don't know where you go from there. And a lot of the writing that you've written sounds hackneyed or cliched because you're your own worst critic. Right. And so you end up grinding to a halt. Um, there's also uh, psychologically the, the idea of forming good habits, uh, writing every day, which is what all great authors do, is they end up writing something every day. I'm not there yet. Right. I mean, don't write writing every, every day. day about on one project or about oh, the no, different Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. You want to be working on various projects uh, so that you write some on one project, you run out of steam on that one, you shift over here because now you've regen you know, you've got another head of steam for this project. And so you go from one to the other. Um, and uh, that's that's how most great novelists work. They're not grinding away on a single book all the time. They're doing several different things. Now do you write in a specific genre? I used to think so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I tend to write technical science fiction. Orbits, lasers, I don't do trolls, I don't do swords, I don't do magic. Um, but I was challenged uh, to write a young adult novel, and that's what I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sprawling 173,000 words, but uh, I have to cut it down to about 70. So it's on a massive weight reduction program. Now, 173,000 words is oh, how many pages? Oh, it's 775 pages. It's ridiculous. Nobody's going to read that. So I have to slim it all the way down to about 300 pages. So I've got to cut. Sixty percent. Is that easier or harder? For me, it's much easier to cut. Okay. Because I can read this and go, oh, this is garbage, and throw it out. Right. And um, the experience that I've had with NaNoWriMo has led me to believe that I can generate novel stuff, Let the writing, much easier uh, than, than cutting it. I mean, I can generate, so I don't have a problem hacking out a thousand words. Other people, you know, your mileage may vary. <laughs> for, for folks at home who may not be familiar with NaNoWriMo, why don't you tell us who they are and what, what the goals of the organization sure. are? Sure. NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, was started in 1999 by a bunch of people out in San Francisco, about 30. And they said, yeah, you know, let's just try to write 50,000 words in 30 days. Bet you can't do it. It was a challenge, and it's always been a challenge. There are no prizes, no awards, no nothing like that. But it's a, it's a challenge. A lot of people, probably some of your viewers, are sitting at home saying, you know, I've always had this idea to write a novel. Right. In November, National Novel Writing Month uh, starts off one November, and the challenge is there. Join us. Do it. Write 50,000 words in 30 days. And that means that you write eh, probably seven to eight pages a day. That's all you have to do. You really don't want to fall behind because then you got to write 16 or 24. It's a lot, right? lot tougher. Right. Um, but that's that's really the goal. And uh, as Does, of last year, yeah. uh, sorry, no, okay. as of last year, there were 340,000 people in 60 countries that are part of National Novel Writing Month. 
It's now, now international. Is it linked somehow? Do you all know it? Do it t together? Or is there some well, you website don't, that everybody goes to? There is a centralized website for the community building aspect of it. For example, I'm the municipal liaison, one of two, okay. for the central New Jersey region of NaNoWriMo. Okay. The um, there, Woodbridge actually falls on a border between Central and Northeast, so you can choose whichever reason, region you like. I like Central because yeah, we always win. <laughs> we write more it's good words. To win. We, we write more words with fewer people than uh, Northeast does. Sorry, Northeast, and uh, we generate more donations to uh, NaNoWriMo, which is a 501c3. Uh, tax does, exempt organization. Where does that money go? That money goes to support the website, which is huge because you know, 340,000 users right. chews up a lot of bandwidth and a lot of tech support. Um, in addition, the money goes to support things that are for children. For example, they've got something called the Young Writers Program, where children as young as about seven, they reach down into the schools. And they say for, for children 7 to 17, we've got programs for you. The Young Writers Program is a fantastic thing. I just read a story on the blog um, two days ago about how 500 kids in a school in Kansas not only wrote but proofread, edited, and published through CreateSpace their own novels. And they actually are holding them. They, they had some, uh, some pictures there. Kids lined up along the, the walls of the school holding their novels. <laughs> and just imagine what that's like yeah. for a sixth grader. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just fantastic. Now, now NaNoWriMo, it's, it's, it ends National, what, National Novel mm -hmm. Writing Month, but it's yes. really an organization, right? It's an organization, yeah. yes. Uh, and so th do you do this collectively? I mean, do you have sites? Are there training sessions that uh, the well, organization has? One of the neat things is that it's almost entirely self-directed. The municipal liaisons, uh, Roshenda Gould is, is my uh, co-municipal liaison. Uh, she said it best. She says, here in Central, we dream big, and then we make it happen. Uh, we do. Uh, we, our goal is to get as many people across 50,000 as possible. We want people to catch the bug of writing, to be able to generate uh, their novels, which are very important to them, to put that work into it, to get it done, and to be able to go to CreateSpace, which is actually part of Amazon, uh, if you cross 50,000, you get five free copies. And you can go there, upload your novel, and hold it in your hands. And to uh, some of the people, that's an extremely important thing. We, there was a 12-year-old, actually too young to be part of NaNoWriMo, but she snuck in. We don't know this stuff. And she showed up at our TGIO party, thank God it's over, party last year and said, yeah, I wrote 25,000 words. For a 12-year-old, that's pretty amazing. That's a lot, yeah. Yeah, and uh, she's, she's on fire. Now, 50,000 words is about... 300 many, pages. About 300 pages. That's double space, single side. And how do you... What's the significance of that? Is it really just to program people or to help them discipline themselves to... Uh, focus on their writing and to really produce. Is that the goal? The, the idea is that you turn off your inner editor. Okay. okay? You just turn it off. You write, and I, I've done this myself. You write and you've written yourself into a cul-de-sac, and you just draw a line that says everything from here to here is garbage, and I'm going to go back to here. Okay. And I write that in the manuscript, and then I start again and go in a different Somewhere direction. Else and and that's fine. Because all those words count. And the theory here is that you just produce. You crank out the words and you turn off the inner editor. And something magic happens within the noveling brain when you do that. It, it allows your subconscious to come out. And your subconscious is the one that's actually doing all the work, all the imagination. Right. And it'll come out and it'll form stuff for you. And you're like, I didn't see that coming. Right. And now you have you have a, a program that you're doing with the Woodbridge Library, right? Yes. Let's uh, talk about that. Woodbridge Library. Um, they approached uh, John Gibbs, who's part of the New Jersey Authors Network, which is a Yahoo group, and uh, they said we'd like to have authors come in and give talks. And uh, while John was there, they talked about NaNoWriMo, even though I had not actually been in there or anything else. Right. And John knows that I'm very deep into NaNoWriMo, and so he passed that contact on to me. We went and talked with them, 
And we did something over the summer called Monkey in a Box. And uh, I believe that... Uh, you being the monkey. I'm the monkey. And what we did is we sat, I sat in a corral of tables and uh, we had a uh, widescreen TV facing out to the audience and they were plugged into my computer and as I wrote, they could read. Really? So... And How it, is that? That has to be a challenge, right? It was a lot of fun. Um, we had uh, people from Australia, Norway, Finland, really? Wales, and Canada also participating just because I said that I was going to do Online, it. Online, they did? Online. Okay. And uh, we had people producing 10,000 words in a day, which is pretty big achievement. Right. And uh, in an eight-hour eight run, I did about uh, 11 and a half. 11 and, and a half thousand? Thousand. Wow. And the, the idea was to show people that, yes, it is possible and to demonstrate how turning off your inner editor allows things to happen. Uh, and it was just a lot of fun. And we had, um, while we were there, there was a, there was a young girl uh, about 9.30 in the morning. I started at 9. Okay. Uh, about 9.30 in the morning, she's sitting there staring at the screen. And she turns to her mom and says, I'd like to, I'd like to do this. Can you go home and get my laptop? And she, her mom went home, got her laptop, and she was there till about 4.30 mm -hmm. writing along with us. Wow. And that's pretty amazing. Now, come November, um, the uh, Woodbridge Library, uh, we've got a talk scheduled for the 23rd at okay. 7 p.m. We're going to have our kickoff party the 30th at 7 p.m. And uh, we're going to be doing write-ins there on a weekly basis. Okay. And they'll be on part of the library calendar and the schedule. And, you uh, you want to make sure that uh, want to make sure that you go and check that schedule out because it's going to be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun, and if you're interested in writing, if you're interested in becoming a better writer, I'd urge everybody get involved. Get over to the library November, right? November. When's the first? The first first no November. November first, of course, the day after Halloween. So go trick or treat, and then go over and start writing your the great American novel, right? That's right. All right. My guest has been Bill Patterson. Uh, he is the regional municipal coordinator for NaNoWriMo. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we'll be joined by Paul Vigoro. He's the author of a new mystery novel, so stay with us, everybody. And what we're doing here is Camp NaNoWriMo. You've heard it said that if there's a million monkeys on a million typewriters for a million years, they'll reproduce the works of Shakespeare. This is one monkey in one box writing a novel. And I thought it would be a great idea to show people that you can, in fact, write a novel. Monkey in a Box is a self-imposed challenge by our monkey, municipal liaison Bill Patterson. He thought to himself, what if I wrote my novel in public and showed people how I do this and how possible it is? We've invited writers from throughout our community to come and write with him. He has a large screen TV which is projecting the exact same thing that is on his laptop, so people are reading his writing in real time. We've had people come up and stop and talk to us about writing, and it's just been a fantastic, fun time. If you want to write a novel, we're here to help you. Welcome back, everyone. We're joined now by Paul Vigoro. Paul is the author of a new book titled Beyond the Veil of Lace. Nice timing on that lift, wasn't it? Uh, and Paul is from right here in Fords. And this, Paul, this is your first novel, right? It is, so yes. It's a very exciting thing to have it's it finally published, right? Unbelievable, yes, yes. I'm living a dream right now. <laughs> Tell us about how... Uh, you, yourself. You, 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 the book tells us that you uh, first became interested in creative writing way back in high school. Correct. How, um, how did that happen? Journalism, one, one, one semester, I, I, saw, I thought it was interesting to just put something creative on paper. Um, even things like the teacher would say, you know, so-and-so shot the president. How is that possible? Well, they're a photographer, so in other words, using words can express something. And I thought that was kind of interesting. You can just put down words and create a whole something, uh, something fictional or something real. And I sort of had a, an interest in it at that point, but I didn't really pursue it. I just did it on a creative side in one, one class, right. did some poetry, uh, and then again, I didn't really pursue it for, for, ma for many years, actually. So uh, how, did it, how did you come to, you went on and had a career, and you have a career, mm -hmm. in addition to being a, an author, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and how did you come back around to the point where you said, you know, it's really time for me to write my novel. Yeah, I would say a few years ago is when that thought came back to me. It was the thought of, of just putting something on, on paper. I knew that something was inside of me. I wanted to kind of put it out there and I had this vision. I just kept seeing this vision of 
uh, how to start a you know how to start a book. How do you, where do you start? And I right. kept seeing where do uh, you start? I, yeah, <laughs> I, I actually had a vision of uh, somebody looking out of a window, and I don't know if I was influenced from a movie or something, but I just said, I'm seeing a hand parting curtains. You know, they're seeing something. I don't know. Are they are they, are they guilty of it? Did they do something, or are they just uh, introverted or, or something or reclusive? And I just kept thinking of, well, I have to do something with that. And I started to create in my mind this person who's looking out of a window, but he's sheltered. He's introverted. I went along with that thought. And I said, if he's sort of living in his own world, almost as if behind a veil, and everything else is outside of him, he's looking beyond the veil of lace. And that's when I had the title. And I jotted it down. And I knew I had the title. It was like an epiphany. And I sat there. And I said, well, now let me talk about this person. Well, I guess if he's reclusive, let's call him Nathan. I don't know, Nathan Small. You know, Nathan Small cautiously parted the curtains and peered outside of his bedroom window. There's my first the sentence. first line, yeah. And so what I did, and again, maybe unusual to some people, is I just made sentence after sentence. I just kind of piggybacked on each previous sentence, sort of, let me answer why that happened. And, and I kept seeing it in a visual sort of a sense. And I think I may be a director at heart because I was sort of seeing it from his perspective and then who he's looking at. And then I had to develop characters who was looking up at him and I just kind of create this whole sort of fictional town, fictional people who are investigating a murder. You know, I figured if it's a murder, it's going to be sort of interesting. Right. I tried to follow nothing really because I didn't really follow any author. I don't read that much. I just had something <laughs> in my mind. There's a confession. There's a confession right there. I, I'm, I'm actually uh, to, to maybe others who are struggling right now and who read a lot and who are, you know, haven't done anything. I'm, I'm the enigma. I, I wrote something in which I can't just say it's like this or like that. That's maybe my own vision. Um, I, I made, a, I think, a, a short story, which I think translates to, you know, maybe television or in the movies, obviously. I'm hoping maybe that's the future, of course. Right. And, and again, it was just springing board off of every previous sentence, tried to make a twist ending, and my first review, which was a, a co-worker who said it was a page turner, then I knew I had something. Well, it is a page turner. And let's talk about the book for, for, mm -hmm. for a few minutes without, without giving away the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the twist, of course, because mm -hmm. uh, we want people to buy it and read it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a mystery. It's mm -hmm. a murder mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, and tell us a, a little bit more about the, the book. Well, I think that um, because it was set in a small town, which is fictional, and again, somebody could argue uh, why are there two deputies and a sheriff in a town, usually more than that. But again, it's all just, you know, uh, it's just it's just surreal, perhaps. Um, I just tried to make a real-time investigation, tried to develop characters to where we can follow along, mm -hmm. and the reader can then almost become the protagonist going through this investigation. And perhaps, as I was hoping, uh, people can say, Oh, I didn't expect that. So again, I've tried to have a twist ending. I tried to have almost like a twist and then a twist. Right. Um, uh, it, maybe it's a formula that everyone has used, but I, I, I think that if, if it's just real time in a matter of two days, you know, the reader can go along with it, get the surprise ending, and, and, and I hope that this... Now, know, the, the real time nature of it and, mm -hmm. the, and this, the sentence building, right. sentence structure does make it a, a page turner. You do mm -hmm. kind of move quickly yeah. along throughout the book. Mm -hmm. uh, was that that by design? Did you want it to be fast paced? I mean, was that a conscious decision you make as you start to write? I mean, I understand you you have the vision and then you, you, you now you start to develop the characters, mm -hmm. but pacing is very important to the book, right? Whether you want yeah. it to be sweeping or bup, 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 quick. De definitely. Uh, it, well, it was, and I think that it was probably. I can best say that it was written like that because I didn't really know where I was going. Okay. Even along the way. Because, as a matter of fact, I can say that in my writing... So of you it, didn't know where the investigation was going to lead, huh? Exactly. That's the funny thing. And as I said here, and I honestly can say, <coughs> I almost look back and I say, did I really do that? Because I was going in a different direction. You know, even as I, I began to say here that I thought, is he guilty? Is he innocent? You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm obviously not going to give the answer. Right. But when I first was writing that sentence, I went a different direction. So I changed gears in my mind. And on paper, when I started to say, no, I can make, I can make this story go in a different direction. And I think it was because I made it real time. It was just the easiest thing to do. Mm -hmm. If it's real time, then I can always say, well, I already covered that. And now what's new? And, and of course, it does mean there's a whole lot of fact checking and cross referencing at the end of it. And, sure. and this is actually where um, the, uh, the uh, sorry, the publisher, Publish America. Well, let's talk uh, about the publisher a little yeah. bit, but let's finish t talking about the, uh, uh, the book itself. Did you draw on 
on your own life experiences? I mean, are there people in this who are going to recognize friends of yours, family members, who when they read, they go, "Hey, that's that's me." <laughs> or, you know, they they they're, my I've dog heard, is Lucy. Yeah, right. I've heard two things. I've heard somebody actually say, "You're kind of the sheriff," you know, because I made an allusion to a distended belly or something, or you know, <laughs> or parting hair or something like this. Um, I don't, and then somebody else even said, I can kind of tell it's you or something like that. You know, d different things. Right. So nothing really concrete. Uh, definitely some images of when I was younger, small town environment. Right. You know, because again, it, you grew I, up in Pennsylvania, correct. right? And then you moved to, to the city. Correct. When I was six. And so the, the earliest years, and when my sister and I were in a, uh, about 30 minutes every morning, we were in a uh, neighbor's house to get picked up by the, by the bus to school that sort of locale, that sort of setting of small yard, two trees, living room to the left when you walk in, mm -hmm. I actually incorporated that in there. So definitely some images of when I was young are in there, but again, it's very subtle. You know. How long did it take you to, to write the book? The, um, the whole, the whole storyline, at least 80 pages, was maybe a few years ago, uh, in which time I was, of course, pretty pleased with it. I said, hey, this is something I can do now, and I put it on paper, and I tried to send it out. I sent it to uh, agencies in, in New York. Yeah, primarily. an 80 pages is probably a short story, right? Exactly. <laughs> they were looking at it as a short story, uh, uh, not even a, maybe a novella or a short story. And, and I literally kept track. I had 30 contacts uh, for which uh, five responded. And I'll never forget the responses. Right. All of them basically saying the same thing. Thank you, but we're not interested. Yeah. Or thank you, but best of luck in your endeavors. You know, that sort yeah. of thing. So it was a little bit disheartening, and I put it on the shelf, literally. And... Um, just didn't really think about it, and life goes on, and you know I'm in sales now, and you know home furnishing sales, so I just do my thing. Now, a few months ago, though, end of last year, I broke my ankle. Uh, I've never been home for so long a period of time, so right. I was going a little store crazy, and I said, you know, let me look at my book again. Oh my God, it's not here on the computer because I changed computers. I found my original copy. I started to rewrite it, and I realized I'm rewriting it better. And so I really owe it to really being at home. And breaking your ankle. And breaking my ankle. If it wasn't for my ankle being broken, I don't think I would be sitting here. Not to mention also the publisher having done what they did. But it was because of that time off and because I could focus on it and I could work until 2, 3, 4 in the morning. It didn't really matter. And I was starting to do more freeform writing. I just sort of fleshed it out. Yeah. Did you, get, did you kind of get in a zone when you were writing sometimes? I, I mean, couldn't have said you know, it you couldn't, you, yes. Sometimes you get started and then yes. it's just, yes. the rest of the world gets uh, put on the back burner. And, Absolutely. And I couldn't have said it better because that's how I felt. I actually told people that. I, I said I can't describe it, but it was a zone. It was, again, up until the wee hours of the morning because I didn't even realize it. I wasn't yeah. even having to look at the, at the keyboard because I began to get so fast at it. Um, and so all of that because as fast as I could think of a, a, a phrase or a sentence or a narrative, I wrote it. And of course, I could always tweak it later on, but right. it was just this process, which I can't maybe replicate. I mean, I don't know if I could. So now you extended it. Now it's become a full novel. It's about 200 pages, Correct. give or take. Uh, and now you've got to get it published. Right. How did that come about? Well, um, at the end of beginning of the year, in fact, a couple of things happened. I said, it's going to be my year. I wrote that on Facebook, and I just didn't know where I was going to head. But I knew I had something in my hands, and I was still, we're still working on the book. But around that time, I uh, started to look online. Now, online, by the way, shows you know, half a dozen websites for publishing. Essentially, print-on-demand, that's the latest thing. No mm -hmm. one wants to print 100,000 copies and hope they sell. Sure. They just print on demand. Um, but they all required some kind of fee. And I was basically saying, well, I'm going to be a little bit conservative here. Um, and I found Publish America. I just happened to find their site. And I said, this is too good to be true. They're doing everything for free? What's, what's going on here? And I said, well, of course, I'll submit a few, a few pages. And they said, we're happy to say we're happy to work with your, your you know, take your, take your work. Um, their whole caveat, though, is that essentially it has to be as print ready as possible. And I'm thinking, that's OK. I'll try to proofread it myself. And as a matter of fact, to my credit, I got everything perfect except for maybe three typos. Really? I made three typos and maybe one little subtle thing I had to change. But, you know, and I, so I tried to do it on my own. Yeah. But again, to their credit, they really take, take, they take a person's work and they do put it together. And it is their, my idea translated into their, their cover. They gave me that cover because they, okay. they captured the essence of the hand parting the, uh, the lace yeah, curtains. The um, and so having found them, I, I, I'm, I couldn't be happier. They've done everything they said they were going to do. They have put it on online in Barnes and Noble and in Amazon, both Kindle and book. They have uh, allowed me to participate in the book expo in New York. Uh, they are still marketing it for me, and it is one of those things that you do um, periodically. You, you, you give them, you know, certain uh, monies, and they, they do translate that to to marketing on my behalf. Mm -hmm. So clearly, this is uh, an opportunity which I I'm, I'm still living this dream. By the way, when when was it first available? 
Um, I think it came out in um, February oh, okay. uh, on, on, on so online you, as a book. Do you have any sense of how it's selling? I, I don't know how it's selling per se because I don't know if it's being met by people who are just perusing and saying, hey, that looks pretty interesting. And, right. I, and I'm hoping, of course, the title kind of captures some, something. Sure. And, I, and, I, and I, interestingly enough, and of course, it was part of the, the beginning dream to see my name and then my name picture and then my name on Google produces the book and then my right. book produces my, it's just funny, but yeah. it's amazing to see that. And of course, getting over that amazing moment of like, it's really out there. Um, I'm, I'm still, like I said, I, I just looks like it's getting more and more because I think people are responding to either the word lace or they're responding to, you know, new books or something. Right. So I know that the publisher is going to give me um, semi-annual uh, audits as, okay. to, as to how it's doing. Oh, so you get one coming uh, up pretty so soon. I'll, correct. So, Having written a book now, do you have the bug? Are you going to write another one? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for asking because uh, some have asked me the same thing. I'm thinking, of course, of writing a You mean a it sequel. wasn't an original question? <laughs> yeah, darn. Yeah. I mean, I have the idea of writing a second one. And, of course, I have the foundation now, which is, is key, I think. Right. And, of course, this one will be different because now that I have the foundation, now I can approach it from, well, I have to know the whole story now. Same characters or different Sa characters? Same characters because okay. I have to, let's put it this way, there's a, there's a, there's a climax ending which is going to change and irrevocably change the, the, the sequel. Okay. But it's because of that that I, I can continue right where the first one le left off. Okay, well, we're going to leave it right there. Our guest has been Paul Vigoro, who is the author, Ford's resident, my neighbor, uh, the author of the book called Beyond the Veil of Lace. Uh, it's available. Give us the website if you it could is, real quick. Um, it is publishamerica.com. They are the publisher. Okay. Uh, and as a matter of fact, they can reach the publisher for a special discount uh, by emailing Jackie, Jackie at PublishAmerica.com. Okay. I actually secured the website of Beyond the Veil of Lace to myself. Okay. So if anyone wants to just reach me directly or even get an autographed copy, they can uh, write to Paul at BeyondTheVeilOfLace.com. Okay. Great. Well, there it is. Here's your chance to do it. It's a page turner. You'll enjoy it. I promise. Uh, we'll have you back when you write your next book. Thank you so much. That will do it for today's show. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you the next time we go about the town.